Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fortunate Farmer. We are about to head up the mountain here to finish up that second beam. There's one of them right there. We've got one more, 16 feet long, 8 by 12s. Got the bare essentials here: chainsaw, chain chaps, helmet. It's up to level the mill, sharpening equipment. dissecting this white oak log it's another big one not as big as yesterday but still pretty big so just a couple things about this log you can see where it split so this was the top of the damage section so this whole tree was storm damaged and if you can imagine everything from here north was um, just broken off like it was just a broken top of a tree so I just cut this clean and we're gonna see how much we can salvage here I'd like to get an 8x12 out of here, so I'm thinking something just like this, if we can if we can make it work and get rid of all this damage. It's a big log, just like yesterday, so we'll see what we can get out of it. Some nice boards from yesterday. Five quarter, probably 16 inches wide. So I'm using this off cut right here, this little wedge from yesterday as a tow board to try and jack this end up. I'm trying to get rid of this crack here. So if we could get the log as level as we can, sort of parallel with that crack, I think we can save ourselves a lot of hassle. And I'd really like to not cut down another tree to finish this project. So hopefully this will work. We'll see how it goes. by 12 out of this which is seven and a half by eleven and a half so we just barely got our eleven and a half in this direction and now we need to flip it one time clockwise and take it down to seven and a half and that should take care that should clean out all this and uh, should take care of some of the weighing that's left on the, the beam as well up here we're heading back down the mountain 
using the Willard Mills as a lumber trailer, which is definitely not recommended by the manufacturer, but you know, if you followed all the manufacturer's instructions, you would never have any adventures. So let's see what I can get myself into this time. The tractor should handle it no problem as far as the weight goes. It's just a few tips on some slopes that I'm worried about. Well, we made it up here successfully without losing any of the load. So this turns out to be a pretty good lumber trailer. Later that day, after I had dropped the mill off at its normal location, I came back and decided I would try and work on the timbers for the timber frame pavilion. And as you can see here, it starts to snow, and then it starts to snow really hard. So I ended up calling it here for the day. big 8x12 by, by 16s. These are the last two plates that we'll be cutting for the pavilion timber frame. And I'm going to flash a picture of the pavilion that we're going to be building because I've talked about it a lot but I haven't showed you all what it's going to look like when it's done. I've appreciated the comments that I've got on some of my videos so please don't hesitate to ask me questions and I'll be happy to reply to them. And uh, one other thing, I started an Instagram account so you can find that by searching farmer fortunate. Um, I'll just be posting quick little videos of timber framing and sawmilling and things like that. If you like the social media stuff, for those of you who know me, you know that it was difficult to create a social media account after deleting everything. But that's the way these things work nowadays. If you want to get any exposure, you've got to have somewhat of a social media presence. So got the social media account going on Instagram. Check it out for short little videos. All right, let's get to work. Well, we've got our timbers laid out here. It is freezing cold, so I'm gonna warm up a little bit before I do any more cutting. But everything's laid out. All the um, pockets that we've got to cut, it'll be, let's see, one, two, be eight total uh, with the chain mortiser and then a little bit of routing. And then we'll snip off the ends for that nice, nice angled cut. And that will be it for these beams. Um, I'm gonna double check everything 
again before I do any more cutting. But here you can see I have labeled, mapped out all of the all of the posts and plates. So I know which faces are gonna be out. And admittedly, this might not be the professional way to do it, but this is my first first big timber frame project. So we will see how it goes. Hopefully it all fits together smoothly in the end. So I've shown the big timbers, but I haven't shown all the other work that's gone into this pavilion so far. So we've got braces right here, king posts right there, rafters right here, and then all four posts cut and laid out behind it. This is a test fit brace right here. And you may look at this and think, wow, that's split right down the middle, but it's just a little bit of surface checking. Take a look at the other side, there's nothing there. So yeah, it'll be just fine. All the ends are coated with uh, sealant, anchor seal, all the exposed end grain.
This piece that I'm using right here was the top of a post and I cut the tenon and I saw a little bit of what could be ant damage, but it was, it was really negligible in the tenon. And so I proceeded to cut this mortise and when I did, I don't even, I can't remember how many ants came out, but it was somewhat, something in the thousands. So I shook all the ants out of this thing. I must've lifted it up and dropped it like a hundred times to get all the ants out. And now it's just a nice test piece. Um, this would be, this is the exact same layout as my posts um, with including this mortise right here. So it's, it's a nice little test piece to make sure all my joinery fits.